Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to boost your FPS and stop lag in Minecraft 1.18.1. 1 1.18 is more resource intensive than previous versions of Minecraft, so something like this video is very, very useful for it, right? With all the new world generation and things like that, it's made performance for some machines go down significantly. Hopefully, we can squeeze a bit more performance out of them today and allow you to keep playing Minecraft. First and foremost, though, we do have a much more sponsor, which is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server. We love just Apex so much that we lost our own server, played our breakdowncraft.com on them, and they make these awesome tutorials possible for you. So thanks to Apex for sponsoring the video. Again, you can check them out at the first link down below, thebreakdown.xyz xyz slash apex anyway let's go ahead and jump on into this now if you look here we have optifine already installed optifine is recommended for this and actually it's not recommended it's required pretty much because the only way you're going to squeeze more fps out of minecraft is really using optifine it has in so many different performance enhancements and things that you should really add in order to increase fps and give a boost so how do you get optifine well in the description down below we have an in-depth guide on how to download and install optifine for minecraft 1.18.1 i know it says 1.18 here but 1.18.1 uh, was recorded right before this tutorial and will be here when you land on this page if it isn't the similar process for 1.18 versus 1.18.1 one. Nevertheless, once you've gotten Optifine though, you will have it in Minecraft like this. Then we want to actually start in the Minecraft launcher. First things first, RAM can cause quite a bit of lag in Minecraft, and while we do have a dedicated RAM tutorial in the description down below on how to add more RAM, the basics of it are you want to go to Installations. In this case, you would select your Optifine installation, click on Edit, scroll down to where it says More Options, scroll down all the way, and then change this first number. So for me, it's XMX2G. That means two gigabytes of RAM is dedicated to Minecraft. Usually vanilla Minecraft doesn't require more than four gigabytes. If you're asked to mod it or anything like that, check it in the description down below where we have our more in-depth RAM guide. And by the way, some people might not be able to run 4 gigs, and that's why it is important to use that RAM guide if you really want to get in depth. By the way, if this doesn't work, just come undo it, right? And then you're good to go. Nevertheless, we want to then change our resolution. Now, resolution is a big thing. Technically, the least amount of lag you'll get is at 800 by 600. But it's going to look absolutely horrible. It's going to be hard to see on your screen all of that stuff. I have drawn it 1080p for this video, so 1920 by 1080. But the lower this number, the better. So keep that in mind. You can kind of select anything in there, and you can even enter in custom numbers. Once you've got that, you want to go ahead and click Save. And then you want to launch your Optifine profile. By the way, you might have to click Play and then click Play again to get Optifine open. That's just saying, hey, you're about to play some modded Minecraft. Except, uh... There we go. <laughs> it wasn't loading. Now it's loading. We're good. So nevertheless, there we go. Optifine is loading up. No reason for you to sit and listen to me talk while we're launching the main menu. So I'll do a quick jump cut. All right. So here we are in the Minecraft main menu. First things first, let's get a baseline for our FPS. I would recommend joining the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, playedoutbreakdowncraft.com. And once you've joined in, go ahead and hit F3 on your keyboard. That is going to show you your FPS in the top left-hand corner. Wait for it. There we go. We hit F3 up here in the top left-hand corner. We can see FPS. Now, I don't know exactly what these numbers mean, and truthfully, I probably should, but what I've always done is gotten the range, right? So the first number, I just write down what that is, and then I write down what the second number is. It's going to be changing, by the way, constantly, so just go ahead and kind of write down an average, and I would say 130 is a good one for the first number. For the second number, I'm seeing drops as low as 40, but I'd say probably 90 is a safe bet. That's what I would call our first intro FPS. I'd recommend you go do the same, by the way. I'd recommend you go get an intro FPS. What is your starting FPS, right? And then, once you've done that, come back disconnect from play.breakdowncraft.com and when we're done post what your before and after fps is in the comments that way people know hey this is actually working right and if it's not working let us know right it's awesome stuff maybe we can figure out what something specific with your system would work better nevertheless once we're here let's go ahead and click on options and then first off we need to start with resource packs you need to turn these off and if you don't know how if you have a selected resource pack here go ahead and move it over all that should be in selected is default now some resource packs do claim to increase performance but usually that's not true, right? Usually that doesn't work out. So I would recommend just having all of your resource packs turned off, which means the only thing that's selected is default. Click done, might reload Minecraft, and then click on video settings. And here's where Optifine really begins to shine, right? Optifine is going to be the best way to increase performance because it unlocks so many settings. As a matter of fact, all of these menus right here, all six of these are not there by default. They unlock so much cool stuff for you to be able to do and for you to be able to increase performance with. Overall though, you will notice the theme. Everything either needs to be on fast, it either needs to be turned all the way down, or it needs to be turned off, right? So graphics need to be set to fast, render distance, two chunks, and by the way, all these settings are assuming you can't play at all. And what we're going to do is turn everything all the way down. We're going to turn everything off. And then you can come back in here and play with some stuff. For example, render distance, you might be able to turn that to 8. You might be able to turn that to 16, depending on your system. But by default, let's turn everything down and see what we can do. And then you can tweak. You can change. You can increase. You can, you know, move stuff around. But 
By default, turn everything down. And that's what we're doing here as well. Simulation distance turned all the way down. Smooth lighting level turned off. Max frame rate, actually turned that one to unlimited. That's gonna allow you to see what the highest frame rate is. However, limiting it, limiting it to 60 or 120 can be okay as well. I would recommend leaving it unlimited though, just to really see what that max FPS is. As far as GUI scale goes, technically, right here, one is what is going to be the best. But um, we are making a video and I would like you all to be able to see what we're doing. So uh, let's say we go ahead and leave that to three or should we do four? We'll do three, we'll do three. There we go. Once we're here, we then wanna turn off Entity Shadows. Brightness doesn't affect performance. Attack Crosshair doesn't affect performance. Dynamic Lights do and that needs to be turned off. Dynamic FOV does not affect performance. Turn it on. If you uh, like FOV, turn it off. If you don't, I don't. Shaders, go ahead and open that up and make sure that is off. If it's not, that's probably why you were lagging. Go see if you're lagging now without shaders. But nevertheless, Shaders is very resource intensive, so make sure that is turned off. And the acing over here, by the way, you can turn that off as well, and that is going to affect performance if that is on. We can then go ahead and click done and come over to quality. From here, we want to, like I said, turn everything either off or turn it all the way to the lowest settings or fast. So there we go. We want to turn mipmap levels off. Technically, mipmap type doesn't matter, but I went with nearest because, yeah, endoscopic filtering needs to be turned off. And then anti aliasing here also needs to be turned off. There's actually two places for that. Isn't that interesting? Now, with this, we then want to go ahead and turn off emissive textures and basically everything on this page uh, needs to be turned off, I believe. Yeah, this is going to be one where we are literally going down through here and turning absolutely everything off because absolutely everything here is affecting performance, except this, right? FOV effects, that's up to you, right? Distortion effects is also up to you. I don't really think that's causing too much lag. However, it can make it feel more laggy if it's really crazy. We can then go ahead and turn everything else on this page off, except for connected textures also need to be turned off. Sorry about that. I thought those could be turned to fast. No, those need to be turned off. Everything here needs to be turned off, right like so. Looking good. Then go ahead and click done and we can move on to details. Now this one is a bit different because everything can't be turned off. Clouds can, but trees, I don't think we can turn those off. So what we need to do is turn those two fast. Rain and snow, you can turn that off. If you do like it though, you can turn it on fast. I know that adds some immersion into Minecraft. Nevertheless though, sky can turn that off. Stars, turn that off. Sun and moon, turn that off. Show capes, turn that off. Actually, it doesn't matter. Capes don't affect performance. Fog, it needs to be turned off. Fog start, doesn't matter. You just turned it off, but you can go ahead and put it to point two if you want. View bobbing, go ahead and turn that on or off. Doesn't matter because it doesn't affect performance. Same goes for held item tooltips. Auto save indicator also doesn't affect performance. However, swap colors do and those need to be turned off. Vignette needs to be turned to fast. Alternative blocks need to be turned off and biome blim needs to be turned all the way down. And the distance needs to be turned to 50%. There you go. There's your settings for details. From there, we can move on to performance. Performance is actually a really, really cool one because this is where you're getting a lot of those code changes to really make Minecraft faster versus vanilla, right? All this other stuff is cool and it's going to affect performance. But if you did all that without doing the performance tab, well, it's not gonna be as good as it could be. So once you're here, everything's going to be a bit different. And one of the cool things, you can hover over these to get a very, very in-depth sort of look at this. Now, by default, render regions move stuff to the GPU, right? It optimizes your GPU. If you do not have a dedicated NVIDIA AMD sort of graphics card, then you need to leave this off. You do, turn it on. Fast rendering needs to be turned on. Smart animations needs to be turned on. Fast math needs to be turned on. Smooth FPS, you should probably turn that on. It's gonna make it more stable, but I'm curious what the max FPS we can get here is, so I wanna leave it turned off. If you're curious about that as well, you can leave it turned off and then come back and turn it on later. Smooth world is another one where it's gonna stabilize FPS. I'd recommend turning it on, but again, I wanna see what the max FPS we can get is, and so because of that, I wanna leave it off. Again, both of these should probably be turned on for you, but it is going to lower your overall FPS number, but make Minecraft smooth. Smoother. Chunk updates needs to be set to one. Dynamic updates needs to be turned on. Lazy chunk loading needs to be turned on. And as far as chunk builder goes, this needs to be left on threaded. Now, if you read this here, it can be different. And I have changed this around a little bit. And I haven't seen it drop FPS too much, but it does seem like threaded is better. And it actually doesn't give you like what is best here. So nevertheless, you can read through that if you would like and kind of make the best choice that you think would work for you. But threaded is what I'm going to go with. From there, we can go ahead and click done. Click on animations, easiest tab here, because all we have to do is click all off and click done. Other, there's not really much in here that can affect performance. Full screen mode resolution can, so feel free to turn this down if you are playing on full screen. And then show FPS, turn this on if you want to see your FPS in the top left. That's what I'm doing. It's going to make our FPS reader he reading here in a minute a lot easier. Weather can be left on or off, depending. Technically though, weather off is faster. Time, technically turning this to day only is going to be faster, meaning worlds aren't going to be, or mobs aren't going to be spawning. But I again would recommend probably leaving that default if you're in survival. For autosave, this is going to be set to whatever you can lose if you were to crash Minecraft, right? So for example, can you lose six minutes of work in Minecraft? I can, that's about where I feel comfortable. However, can you lose, if you can lose 24 minutes, well then that's okay. You're gonna lose a lot of work potentially, but it does mean you could lag less, right? 
45 seconds is what it is about to fall. Three minutes is what I would recommend the least amount you put this as. But we can go ahead and turn this to six minutes because that's where I feel comfortable. If I can get the rec setting, there we go. Now we can go ahead and click done. And by the way, if you do have any is option or issues with this, you can reset video settings to default at any time. Nevertheless though, let's go ahead and click done, done again, and launch on in to playdotbreakdowncraft.com. Now, as I said, because we have this new FPS setting in the top left of here, we have our basically improved FPS showing all the time. Now, if we hit F3, it's there as well. So, standing still here, just looking one way, I'm seeing uh, probably a high of 513. We'll go ahead and say 500 on the first number. And then on the second number, I'm seeing upwards of, it's dropping a lot like it was in the 200s. We'll go ahead and say 190. So, that means we went from 130 and 90 on the bottom to 500 and 190 on the bottom. Quite the FPS increase. Now, obviously you can go in and change these settings and do anything you want, but overall that is going to be the best settings that you can do to actually play. From there you can tweak it, you can turn it or turn it around, you can change things, you can do anything you want, but hopefully now you can play Minecraft. What were your before and after FPS settings? Let us know in the comment section down below and come play with us on playdotbreakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. It's got survival, it's got skyblock, you will love it. Test your uh, test your new performance on it because uh yeah, I mean the server's lag free, so come test your lag free Minecraft on it. Nevertheless, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content every single day of the week. My name is Nick, and I am out. Peace.